and the U.S. Food and Drug Administration this week approved the use of the decades-old anti-malaria drugs hydroxyl chloroquine and chloroquine after preliminary data showed they had efficacy against COVID-19. The emergency authorization comes on the back of results from a small study in France in which four out of five COVID-19 patients who were treated with chloroquine had favorable outcomes. Well, that's our focus on commodities market today. And we have to maybe EAK, one of the research analysts with Financial Derivatives Company, to take us through that. Thank you for joining us. Do Thank you so much, Mizzi. Chloroquine, an antidote to COVID-19. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> now, do you think this is much awaited silver bullet, I mean, ahead of a vaccine? I mean, it's case. still too very early to say, but however, it's important that we encourage um, the health practitioners that are right in front of, you know, this um, COVID-19 pandemic, trying to make sure that we have a unique vaccine that um, addresses the issue of the virus. Um, it's important that we also recognize the fact that um, this um, approach is the right step in the right direction. I mean, um, we're having one of the many possible solutions to COVID-19. It's not permanent, but I mean, it's something that we can look forward to and hopefully build on for a vaccine to come out soon enough. Now, when we look back here in Nigeria, we know that a lot of people die, you know, annually you know, malaria yeah. here in Nigeria. Now, yes. with chloroquine primarily an anti-malaria drug, what would be the effect on this on the market, you know, for chloroquine? When we look at this, we look at it but on the global market and domestic markets, which is Nigeria. On the global market side, we're definitely going to see um, stockpiling of the drug from hospitals and top um, clinics that are making sure that they're addressing or they have a lot of COVID-19 patients. And in the U.S., we're already um, seeing such panic reactions as most hospitals that are addressing this issue are stockpiling on the drug. In the domestic market, which is Nigeria, we haven't seen in, um, the cases of coronavirus rise exponentially. However, if that should happen, if we move from a mild scenario to a moderate or a severe case of the scenario of um, the virus, having more than um, having up to 50,000 cases of the virus, we could see um, a malaria crisis at hand because the um, mortality rate for malaria is far higher than that of COVID-19. And if we see um, and if the virus, um, the spread of the virus increases and um, there there is a movement of, or there's a, there's a transition of the drug chloroquine used for, now used for COVID-19 rather than malaria, there could be a malaria crisis. But however, it's still very early to say or to determine whether this could happen. Now, this newfound use of chloroquine for COVID-19, of course, will increase um, aggregate demand for the drug. Could this lead to an increase in the supply and perhaps uh, margins of pharmaceutical companies globally and, um, of course, here in Nigeria? Yes, um, what we could find um, definitely would be that um um, there would definitely be an increase in the supply. I mean, we're just going to see demand-supply dynamics play out. Um, what we're going to see is different pharmaceutical companies increase their production of the of the drug. And um, for here in Nigeria, we're definitely going to see an uptick in the demand. So hopefully, we expect or we we hopefully expect that individuals don't over don't abuse the drug because now they know that um, chloroquine can be used temporarily um, to address the COVID-19 I and mean, just um, supposedly. So the, we hope that people don't die from the fear of the virus rather than the virus itself because they're no, trying the to self-treat. this chloroquine, I know that a lot of people react to exactly, this chloroquine. Exactly. I mean, yeah. So, I mean, how would they be able to manage with this, with the reactions? Some... I mean, it causes some scratch, yes. and then some, it could affect your eyes, you yes. know. Yes, you know, it, um, chloroquine is used for really severe cases in Nigeria, um, really, really severe cases, rather, and Nigeria records one of the most um, amount of severe cases of malaria globally, so, and that's why chloroquine is still, that's why you can even still find it um, as an over-the-counter drug in some chemists and in some pharmacists, but however, um, the reaction or the use of the drug is not for people to just go ahead to take and use and for self-treatment. It's um, recognized, right now it's a recognized medication that people can make use of for now and it has to be 
used by the hospitals or the um, recognized clinics that are treating COVID-19 patients. All right, we'll see how it goes, but just let's exactly. hope we get a final solution to this definitely, um, problem. Definitely. Thank you. Dumebi. Thank you so much. Dumebi Yeke is one of the research analysts with Financial Derivatives Company. And African finance ministers are asking International Monetary Fund, World Bank and EU support for bilateral, multilateral and commercial debt relief amid the coronavirus crisis. And that's according to the UN Economic Commission for Africa. Africa. Africa is facing a perfect storm of an impending global economic downturn, plummeting oil and commodity prices and weaker currencies, which threaten to imperil its coronavirus response. Co-chaired by South African Finance Minister Tito Mboweni and Ken Oforiata of Ghana, the ministers met via video conference on Tuesday. In an initial meeting organized by UNECA last month, ministers called for a $100 billion stimulus package, including a suspension of debt service payments. Following Tuesday's meeting, they said the continent's development partners should consider debt relief and interest rate forbearance over a two to three year period for all African low income and medium-income countries. And Kaya Airways PLC is appealing for a cash bailout from the government to be able to survive the next six months as the partial state-owned carrier runs out of money after grounding all international flights to help contain the coronavirus. It will cost the airline about $5 million a month to manage its grounded fleet and retain a workforce operating a lower pay from this month. And a, cash, a crash in demand for rosewood in China due to the coronavirus outbreak has led to an abrupt halt in illegal logging in a lush pocket of northern Sierra Leone, a rare upside to the pandemic that has killed thousands and left much of the planet under lockdown. Chinese demand for rosewood, which serves as growing domestic furniture market, has fueled illegal logging across West Africa, including in southern Senegal, where thick forests have depleted fast in recent years despite a ban. The unpaid road leading to Sierra Leone's Otamba Kilimis National Park was busy last month, with men loading rosewood logs into flat back trucks for exports to China, an illegal trade that has devastated West African forest. Now the cut rosewood logs are stocked in piles on the pack road that cut across scorched packland. The mark recent tree cutting and burning activities. Today, loggers have practically stopped. Ishmael Sise has been harvesting timber for Sierra Leone's oldest pack since last year. As his team load a small truck with cut logs, he says the loss of the Chinese trade has had a direct effect on the business. Then don't get secret now. So, and then they say no Chinese money to go, you know, they come. Understand? And now they be the only country where they help we, where they come, then buy more. Sierra Leone's president has banned export after he came into power in June 2018, except for wood already cut. Logging for domestic use is allowed, but the government says that logging in packs goes far beyond supply for the home demand and it does not have the resources to stop it. And with that, we wrap up the program for today. Thank you for watching. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwago.